Well, I hope that time change didn't catch you off guard. It sure didn't catch me off guard. No, sir. Rebob, I'm out here in the job site getting ready to dig up a valve next to this tree behind me. That's going to be a pain in the butt. But we got to dig it up because the valve is inoperable and somebody broke the pipe that goes across this waterway here. It's kind of hard to see now because the plants have outgrown the area a little bit. But there is a pipe down there. It is supposed to go across this waterway to water across the way over there. But none of that's happening right now. Broken pipe, the valve's not working. We've got to get this valve behind me dug up. It's right next to that big tree. Not the one that's in front of the tree. That's actually an older valve. We're not going to use that one, maybe. We're going to dig up the one right here. Without further ado, let me go dig this sucker up. The roots haven't been really that bad to me yet. I don't think they're going to get much worse. We'll do the fun part. Get rid of the valve box. We'll end up replacing this. That one's a bit chewed up. Now to get that box of dirt away from the valve so that we can actually replace it. All right, we're pretty much all cleaned out and we're ready to make our repair. I was actually getting ready to clean up these wires. That's why that half inch pipe is there. I was gonna coil them all up and then do this shot to show you guys what everything looks like. And as I'm talking here, does anybody see the problem? No, let me zoom in. Right there, right there. And then this is where I really noticed it right here. I was getting ready to stretch these wires out so I could recoil them for the shot. That's not going to happen now. Now I have to find the last place where the wire is coming out and it looks like it's going to be right here. And guess what? That's how long this wire is going to be now because the rest of the wire is trash and we can't reuse that because it will short. Unfortunately, can't coil that one up nice and pretty, but it will still do its job and it still reaches the valve. So that's okay. All right. Well, let's cut this valve out of our way. I actually went out to go get this valve because I'm going to attempt to rebuild the valve instead of replacing the valve if I can help it. Let's try that first. If that doesn't work out, I do have a nipple. I do have a 45. I can make it work if I need to re reinstall a whole brand new valve, but rebuilding the valve makes more sense. That is why they put all the bolts on top of it so that it can be rebuilt. Let's do that first discharge into this little lake right over here which is a retention area actually and that's where this pipe goes it goes into this retention area and goes across to the other side of the retention area it's broken which is why it was just draining right there all the water just drained through now i can take the valve apart now that the water's leaking through i'm going to go ahead and take all of the bolts off this will end up flooding this hole out but that's why i dug the hole in the first place so that debris won't go back into the valve. It's okay that if this hole fills up with water just as long as nothing ends up going into the valve. And we can manage that with a hand pump. All right, with the last nut out, we can go ahead and pull off the top as I try to do this single-handedly. There we go. Look at all of that buildup on top of that diaphragm. That's just disgusting. And the screen is completely closed. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and let this drain a little bit and then we'll rebuild it. All right, it looks like we've pretty much finished draining. The first thing we're gonna do is put the new collar back in from the, the new valve. We pulled the old one out, the old one's right here. Then the next thing is going to be the diaphragm. Unlike some other um, brands or other types of valves, this one does not need to go in a certain way. You just put the diaphragm in. Some other valves, you may have to line that up with this hole here. All right. So next step, put the spring in. And then the final step is to get that stem lined up, which is impossible to see from up top. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. I've been asked before why I remove this out when I'm installing a new valve. And that's because trying to line that up with the tiny hole with the water coming out of it down there from up above is a little bit of a pain in the butt. With that out of our way, we can go ahead and line this up. So get our bolts back on it. And then we can drop our bleeder screw that we just took out right back down the hole, like you see there, and we're good to go. We'll get the wire nuts, wires, solenoid, all that done shortly. Now you'll notice that I'm going in a star pattern to tighten these. One of the biggest advantages to rebuilding the valve rather than cutting it out and welding a new one in is the downtime that you would have to have waiting for the solvents to cure before you turn the pump back on. Once I reinstall this solenoid here, I can go turn the pump back on, no questions asked. 
and we'll be good to go. All right. All right, let's go kick the pump on and we'll open and close the valve manually to make sure it's working. And then we'll have to move on to part two, which is getting a 40 foot piece of three inch pipe from this end over here to that end over there. David's gonna give me a hand in getting that pipe in next, but like I said, let's go turn the pump on, check our valve, make sure we're good here, and then we'll worry about the lateral line. All right, we've got the pump on. Let's go ahead and see if the valve will open and close as we expect. Water's coming out that end. And let's see if she is going to shut down on like a car screeching to a red light. Let's go ahead and put a top on this. And we're gonna go to lunch. When we get back, we're gonna connect that line to the one that's across the lake, right there. New problem. I've gotta get this 40 foot section and I'm probably gonna stick another piece on there. So will make it 60 foot section of three inch pipe across that waterway. I have another guy on site, but even with the other guy, it's not really gonna make it any easier to get this across there. I'm probably just gonna to have to take off my boots pull up my pant legs and walk this sucker across. That's just a retention area. It's not a canal or anything, so it's only a few feet deep, but still it's full of water. Don't really want to walk through it, but sometimes it's part of the job. We're gonna get it done. Let's do that. Well, I'm soaking wet, but as you can see, the pipe is across the waterway. Now we just got to connect it on both sides, pressurize it, and we'll have sprinklers on the other side. Let's get that done now. Well, that didn't work as well as I wanted it to. So we're gonna cut that bell end out and put a coupling in. David across the lake over there brought up a great point. We didn't have a plan the first time we put the pipe together, which is why it failed so horribly. This time we got a plan. I'm going to step on that shovel, which is going to raise the level of the pipe down there just enough so that the pipe that we're trying to push into it will go right in nice and easy. The reason why it didn't go in before is because the pipe that has the coupling on it down there is going down at an angle. So we got to raise that angle up so that David can push the pipe right in for us. That's what we're going to do now. Wish us luck. Got David walking back over there, mostly because we're working with one Sawzall today and I did the cut on my side, we got it connected. Now he's got to do the cut on his side. He's gonna end up using a couple of 90s to get that last part together because of the water in the middle. We can't really work with the pipe the way we would want to. So we're gonna wait until this water is dried up at some point later on this year and redo that connection over there where he's about to go install the two 90s to get this connected. If we didn't do this, then none of the irrigation would work on that side of the retention area because this is the pipe supplying the water to that entire side. Oh, and in case you were wondering, there's the coupling I ended up putting in in place of the bell end I took out. All right, the zone is working. Ignore that 90, the zone is working. We're gonna cut that 90 out when the water goes away one day, but for now, it's on and working. And I do realize that there is some weight on that 90. I'm looking right at it with you. That'll have to do for right now. We'll come back when this is not full of water and we'll put that back together straight. But until then, now all these palm trees and all of that turf is getting water. On to the next one.